My name is Phil Westmoreland. I was AICHE 2013 president, and I'm taking part in a panel on graduate student education, preparation of graduate students for their careers. Uh, we have three speakers here with me today who will be telling you a little bit about their work. So, Pramod, would you begin? Uh, thank you, Phil. Thank you for having me here. My name is Pramod Kargonkar. I am the assistant director for the engineering directorate at the National Science Foundation. And Phil, we are very interested in the topic of today's uh, panel discussion because NSF is the leading funder of academic research in all fields of engineering. And a substantial fraction of that funding goes to graduate students. So we are very interested that the graduate students are coming out of the PhD programs with the correct preparation for a career, lifelong career of productive achievement. Uh, there are numerous issues, uh, as, as you know, and so I intend to highlight uh, what NSF is thinking uh, in the area of graduate student education uh, uh, for, for their careers. Okay. Joe Helbley, would you say a little bit about the topic of your talk? Sure. Well, thank you, Phil. So I'm Joe Helbley, and I'm the Dean of the Thayer School of Engineering at Dartmouth College. And about seven or eight years ago, we took a hard look at our PhD program and asked ourselves whether we were providing the skills that today's PhD graduates need. We pay a lot of attention as chemical engineers and as engineering academics to helping undergraduate students develop a broad mix of skills. I think in particular, we become very attentive to the importance of innovation and entrepreneurial training for our undergraduates, teaching them to understand the skills needed to take an idea to market, but we've done very, very little at the graduate level. And so we became very interested in thinking about how one might, in an engineering PhD program, enable our engineering PhD students to get similar education, develop a similar mindset, similar skills. And so for us, it's a nice opportunity to be part of this program to look at how PhD engineering education is changing and a role programs like ours might play in contributing to that. Thank you. And Gail, you're going to bring the closing perspective. Yes, thank you, Phil. I'm Gail Gibson, Director of Engineering at DuPont. And at DuPont and many industry, obviously, we hire over 90% of the PhDs. And we also have a lot of interest in the master's and bachelor's engineers. And the types of work they do throughout industry can vary, right? A lot of times we think research for the graduate level um, type engineers, but we really want to focus on research, development, tech service, solving problems for customers, optimization of manufacturing processes, and many different arenas, even uh, managing businesses. So that variety of uh, jobs that people can go into mean there's kind of a need for a lot of different skills. So we'll be talking a little bit about what industry really values and what we're seeing that we like today from, from graduate students and then maybe some areas we'd like to see improved. Back to you. Sounds good. Well, Gail, I'd like to ask you in particular about the different sorts of preparation that people can have. Again, graduate studies also include things like an MBA, which you have. I see a lot of chemical engineering is doing that. What can you say about the additional preparation, grad type preparation that people get? Well, I think um, you know it does vary for really what is uh, the person want to do in their career and, and their life. But in industry, going into a technical degree, the fundamentals are really still important. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a PhD student that's going to work in industry or a master's student, the, the chemical engineering fundamentals we rely on. Perhaps we don't talk enough about those. And I think in graduate education, we'd like to make sure the, the fundamentals around the processes, so separation technology, solids handling, um, particle technology, heat exchange and optimization are still very relevant uh, in industry. In terms of uh, going on the business side, uh, uh, an MBA, I think as a, an engineering student, you kind of have to explore the arenas of what what turns you on, right? A lot of times we get exposure to research, but if what's starting to turn you on are questions about how we apply this in industry, how do I help solve pro problems for customers, um, how do we do that in a way that uh, applies research and, and things that are economical for society to use, then some of the business background might be more useful. So that's just some perspectives. Okay, now Joe, 
you're in academia now, but you also have industrial experience. You have both those points of view. How do you see the alignment between the industrial perspective and academic preparation uh, in graduate studies? That's an interesting question, Phil. You know, and I, I think about it in graduate studies, and particularly in PhD level graduate studies, the motivation of the student and the faculty member is generally first and foremost to think about development of a fundamental scientific idea or, fundament, or exploration of a fundamental scientific question. And in industry, of course, it's the problem that motivates, the problem you're trying to solve that motivates the particular approach and direction that research takes. And so what's been interesting for me um, being in a, an academic position and overseeing a school of engineering is to try and help build programs that bring these two perspectives together, recognizing the importance of fundamental inquiry but really teaching our students, and this is one of the things that was a, an important focus of the PhD program we developed, teaching our students to think about the problem, the needs of the problem, the needs of the community you're trying to develop a technology for, and then use that to define the particular direction of the fundamental questions you're going to be asking. And promote you're at NSF, the AD for engineering, the associate director, Assistant Director for Engineering has a huge influence on the balance between science and application. Uh, from my experience at NSF, there's always a, a defense having engineering in the National Science Foundation and yet academically we emphasize that science. Can you talk in your experience from NSF and academia about how to balance that properly in PhD education? So, uh, you know, as you know, NSF really focuses on fundamental research and that is in the DNA of the foundation and I think it's in the national interest. Engineering directorate actually plays a very important role within the, within the foundation because we have all the sciences and then engineering connects fundamental science with the needs of society. So I feel that engineering directorate actually is a real asset to the foundation and if you look at for example all the new priorities that the foundation has uh, they all involve engineering either in a leading position or is it in a very very strong position so I think that speaks to uh, a societal uh, need and desire for science and scientific research and frontiers to also connect to the real world needs uh, and in Engineering Directorate, we have actually done some things that are really interesting and are having huge impact. So I'll just use as an example our Innovation Core program. That's an experiential learning program for faculty, graduate students, uh, asking the following question. Let's say you have a big invention in your lab. What does it take to, to bring it to the real world? And that program has had amazing uh, success and we are learning a lot from it. Uh, and I think that feeds right into what are the kinds of things we can do to improve the graduate student education at our universities? So, uh, I don't regard these as uh, competing, rather if we, if we correctly structure our work, we can have both of these in the right balance and proportion. And, and I feel that we are very much on the path to doing that. Well, in closing, uh, let's look just a little bit at what recommendations that you have in terms of students and in terms of faculty point of view, are there any key recommendations that you would suggest that chemical engineering departments and doctoral students should be thinking about? So Phil, I will build on the NSF funded workshop that you were actually leading uh, earlier this year. And I know that your workshop has produced a very, very thoughtful report. Uh, I, would, I would encourage uh, all chemical engineering department, department chairs and faculty and their industry members to look at that report and reflect on their own PhD program and see what, what part of the PhD program needs to be modified or changed so as to respond constructively to the issues that were raised in your report. I personally believe that the issues that were raised about student preparation as well as teaching of the fundamentals and evolving nature of research frontiers and research priorities, I think it can be actually addressed for the benefit of the entire community. And I would very much encourage uh, the, the entire uh, chemical engineering academic ecosystem to, to look at it seriously and, and act on it. And we would be very supportive of that from NSF. Good. Sure. 
Yeah, I would, Phil, just echo Promote's comments. I think, you know, it's important for us as academics and educators to keep in mind the outcomes of our students, and the report brings that out very, very nicely. If we look at chemical engineering or if we look at engineering as a whole, it's clear that at most one in ten of our PhD graduates, even today, pursue tenure-track academic positions. And if you look at the number who go to research-intensive universities, the percentage is even smaller. And so I think it's incumbent upon each of us to be asking ourselves, are our programs structured in a way to prepare students for the jobs that the country needs them to take on, whether that's in industry or whether it's preparing them to be the next generation of technology entrepreneurs. And if we're not, let's think very carefully about what we need to build into our programs in addition to the core fundamentals in a discipline so that they're appropriately trained to take best advantage of their education. As a follow-up, what advice would you give to the students as they're going through the program? <laughs> That's an interesting question. I would say to students, whether they're going through a program or as they're considering different options for programs, think carefully about why they're entering an engineering PhD program. Of course, you're not, each student is not going to know with absolute certainty what she or he wants to do in their first year of PhD studies, but are you more interested in working in a large corporate or industrial research setting? Are you interested in being a technology entrepreneur? Do you want to be an academic? And then talk with your advisor, meet with the faculty in your department, talk about how you might build the skills, take courses even outside of your discipline as part of the PhD to help prepare you best for the career you want to pursue. But if I may add to, to Joe's wonderful response, I would tell the student to take ownership of their graduate education. I think they should be the drivers of their own education. What are the things that they want to get out of their PhD program? What kind of skills? What kind of knowledge? And so it's not that the faculty are giving some education to the student, rather the student is figuring out what, what do I want out of this experience. And so take ownership. It is the advice I would give. Yeah, I think that's really well put. Yeah. And Gail, advice for the departments, for the students, and what role industry can play in that? Yeah, I think for overall, for the, for the departments, um, it, it is helping students to see the, the practicality. And, and that may be hard to do, and we need to partner as industry and academia to do that. And that can be kind of professors that come from industry. It can be just kind of mentors from industry for coursework. It could be, obviously, we think a lot about internships and co-ops. But I think it has to come with understanding the possibilities in industry. I think sometimes we separate these worlds of it's research and academia or it's industry. And they sound so bi you know, yeah. just bipolar almost. It, it doesn't really need to be that way. Industry has tremendous opportunities. The speed of the marketplace is getting faster. Yeah. The challenges are greater. And it is in new realms of, of technology and science and engineering, but it's applying those at cost and scale that we can basically, as for-profit companies, mm -hmm. make money, please our customers, do what's better for overall global society. For the students, I, th I think it is about possibility, right? There's an innate curiosity I think engineers have, and that's why they're becoming engineers, because we solve. Engineers are solvers. The world has a lot of challenges to solve, right. whether it's, it's a particular science area about how to achieve something, or how to really help a customer do what they're trying to do in a completely different way at a completely different price point that makes it unique versus competition. Um, so I think for industry, we, we've got to keep the dialogue going. I, I think we've been too silent, perhaps, about what we're needing, right? We just kind of take the students and we do extra training. We, we do extra applied things and, and probably aren't doing enough collaboration around what our needs are and what we're seeing. And I think we can benefit from benefit from that dialogue. It's not just a one-way street, it's a two-way street. Well, thank you. This all is the discussion of a plenary on graduate student education. The entire, entire hour-long plenary will be available on AICHG Academy, so you can see the details of what we're talking about. But this discussion, I think, has been a powerful illustration of it. So I, I thank you for participating. I thank you for being thought leaders in this area. Thank, Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Thank you.